Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, trans functions, which is a uh, chunk of or series of code that can be called multiple times. A function is the stuff that happens. Now, some of these things are functions, like a transform is a function. Timelines, math, and branches, these are all part of a function. They're not themselves functions. They're things that go into a function. And we'll talk about while loops later as well. So uh, a transform changes the location, scale, or rotation of an actor. So let's go into our uh, world. And we're going to add an event. And you already have a trigger box, a box trigger here. And if you don't, you just need to type in um, create a trigger volume right there. And uh, we're going to go to our code here. And for now, just go ahead and just delete everything that you have. We're going to add some new code. So the first piece of code we're going to add is we're going to add an event overlap, begin overlap. And we're going to say that when you uh, go into this place, this cube is going to move. So we're going to select the cube, drag it in. And we're going to do a function, which is a series of code, that transforms the location of the actor. So not get, but we're going to set the actor's location. So we're going to do a set actor location. And the location we're going to use is, if you look at this cube right now, it's at 400, 0, and 100. You have to click on yours and find out what those numbers are and put them into here. 400, 0, 100. And uh, we're going to split this so that it breaks it into three different uh, what are called floats. And we're going to take the new location, 400, and we're just going to do a uh, um, plus. And we'll take 400 here. Oops. We're going to add, let's just add 500 to it. So really, we're just at a change. You get to 900. We don't really need this to do that, but we'll use this later. So just trust me. And this is a, a math operator. So this is going to be a add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So when we hit play and we go into our box, you can see that our box now moves to a different location. And um, it's a very fast, instantaneous movement. It's here, and now it's there. So, actually, I want to put this trigger box further back so I can, you'll see later. Um, make sure, if it doesn't move, make sure that the object is set to movable, the actual cube that's going to move. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Your code won't do anything. All right, now that we've done that, uh, let's talk about timelines. So a timeline is a change over time. So if we want this, instead of moving instantly to a new location, let's have it gradually get there. So we are going to, uh, do me a favor, switch these numbers, put a, put a 400, or put a, whatever your x-axis is, put it on the bottom. You can erase whatever's here for now. I'm just gonna set it to zero. So the bottom number should be where your where your object starts. Right now it's 400 for me. Okay, now we're gonna add a timeline. So we're gonna drag out of here. We're gonna type timeline, and we're gonna call this one moving block. So double click on it, and this is uh, you'll see that you can go back and forth between your timeline and uh, your event graph. So we're going to add a track. We're going to add a float track. And this is um, going to be x axis movement. And we are going to right click on it and add a key here. And we're going to set the value from 0 to 0 and then hit Enter. Right click and add another one. And we're going to set the time to 2 seconds and the value to 500. Since we're only going to need two seconds, let's change the length of our timeline to two. And then so you can see everything, hit these two buttons. And you can see that it goes from zero to 
to 500 in two seconds. This is the seconds, this is the uh, value of your, um, what kind of, a fl float. So uh, I like to go auto on these by just right clicking on them. And that'll cause it to be more gradual. So I'm gonna go to the event graph. We're now gonna add this to 400, which is the current location where it starts. And it's gonna add the timeline to the new location. So let's compile it. And then this thing is just the target. So, you, so it knows what to move. Let's hit play. There we go. Now let's say that you need to get a key first. So uh, this is where branches come in. So a branch checks to see if a statement is true or false. It's like an if statement. And if it follows true, then it's going to go one way. And if it follows false, it's going to go a different way. So uh, to put a branch in, and you'll see, you kind of see what it means when I go through it. The branch is going to check and see if something is true or false. If it's true, our block will move. If it's false, we're going to have it print get key. And again, this is a function, a, a series of code that runs. And this is, says development only, which means it's, it's really just there for you to uh, test. So as you can see, the condition it says checked by default is true. So if we were to walk into that, it's going to move the block. If we uncheck it, it's false, which means if I uncheck it and then hit play and go into here, it's going to say in the top left, get key right up here. So let's have it get a key. We're going to add a cone. This is going to be our key. So let's choose a shape here. And uh, until you get this key, you will not be able to move the block. So uh, I'm going to set this to a metal material so we know that it's a key. I guess a cone. I don't know why we would think that was a key, but. Um, and, and now we're going to use our first Boolean. So a Boolean is a variable. Variables are properties that hold a value. So just like an X value in algebra, an X could be many things. Booleans uh, are a type of variable. They can change. They can be zero or they can be one. True or false. That's it. Integers. We'll get to that later, but those are like numbers, whole numbers. Floats are numbers with decimal places. We'll get to those later. But uh, let's just focus on a Boolean right now. So a Boolean is either true or false. So we're going to create a Boolean by going into our variables, hitting a plus right here. And we're going to type one in that says has key. I've already done it. So let me delete this one. So again, hit the plus. And how do you make it a Boolean? You just, this little drop down right here. It's our, by default, it should be a Boolean already. Now hit compile and then click on it. And you can see that the default value is not true, it's false. So let's have it get this value, which is false right now, and plug it into the branch. So that means when the code hits the branch, it's gonna check to see if this is true or false. It's false, which means it's gonna say get the key. Let's watch. And you can see in the top left, it does say get key. Now, we're going to say that when you hit this key, now that we have this cone selected, let's, let's rename this cone to key. I'm calling mine key two because I already made one earlier. Um, we're going to add a hit event on actor hit. And you can see that it's set to the static mesh actor 4, which is our cone. And then we're going to drag this Boolean out, and we're going to set it, not get it, but set to true. So now, until you get the key, this is going to uh, be false. Once you get the key, this becomes true, and now you can open the door. <clears throat> Let's also destroy 
which is another function, the actor, and we'll just say the self, so that it's this uh, key right here. Let's compile it, and let's try it out. So now, I can't open the door, nothing happens. But then if I get this key first, and then I come in here, now the door does open. And we can actually watch our code. If you go to the debug object, you can set it to coding seven, or whatever, which is the name of my level. You call it whatever yours is, you just pick it. And now you can see that right now, and let's, let's, uh, it's a little hard to see both at the same time, but you can see that if I try to run the code, it's saying false, false, false. Now, I'm gonna come pick up this key. This just got checked to true this variable and you can see if you hover over it it tells you what its new value is it destroyed the cone and now if we come back up to our collision it becomes true and so it runs that piece of code 